Everything's fine so far. All right, gonna try to start it. Mm-hmm. What is going on everybody? I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome to engine swaps that you probably shouldn't attempt at home part three. So it's been about a week since you guys have last seen the progress on our 2019 Volkswagen Alltrack with the Golf R engine swap. And today we are going to update you on what the progress is as of today. And this is the result of the engine swap it really took a toll on my garage. As you can see, I am not a very organized person. There's shit everywhere and tools just everywhere and a bunch of sparkling water and coffee and tea. But anyway, so this is the progress on the Volkswagen all track that we have right now. So we got everything pretty much hooked up and um, we did run into a few issues with wiring. So. First of all, we still have the MPI wires, which still need to be done, and the um, ethanol sensor as well. The other issue that we ran into with this build was wiring on the body harness. So as you guys can see, that gray connector right there, the connector that's on the right side is for the body harness of the car, which also communicates to the ECU and we had to do some slight modifications. I wish this was 100%, you know, bolt on and, you know, plug in play, but unfortunately that was not the case at all with this swap. If this was a GTI motor, it would have been the case because they have the same emissions and wiring, but this was totally not the case. So well, as you guys can see, I got a bunch of wiring diagrams here, all thanks to um, a buddy of mine. So shout out to Felix from Coquitlam VW for coming down here and helping with that wiring diagram because without it, we would have been pretty much screwed. So the all track was missing two wires for the body harness. One of these wires was this black one that we had to steal from the Golf R body harness, which I luckily had as a donor. So we have to steal that wire from the connector on the Golf R, transfer it into our body harness connector on the all track, and then run the wire into this fuse number 10 right here and install the fuse, which I also stole from the Golf R fuse box, if you can believe that. And this black wire goes into pin nine, which was missing on the all track. And that pin controls the injectors on the Golf R engine and it controls these variable exhaust solenoids that sit on the cam tray. So as you can see, I have to take this connector, take the wire out and transfer it to the Golf All Track. Next issue I ran into with this build is on the Golf All Track, the auxiliary coolant pump or the auxiliary coolant shutoff valve rather, which is this guy right here, that's what it looks like. It sits on the all track right there behind the charge pipe and it connects to the DSG cooler. Now on the Golf R, it sits all the way down there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's basically the same part. And the wiring for that was different as well. On the all track, the coolant pump slash shutoff valve run off of this connector. Meanwhile, on the Golf R, the coolant pump ran off of this secondary connector on the body harness. So again, had to go back to the Golf R donor body harness, had to reread the diagram, had to install the additional wire, which Felix has helped with to the body harness ECU connector on pin 39, I believe. So this goes to the secondary connector on the body harness. 
and runs all the way to it. And we actually ended up just using the Golf R body harness connector on this car, just removed all the pins and transferred everything for an easier install. And the next thing, um, the Golf All Track has secondary air injection, which is this pump right here. And the Golf R does not. So um, those wires on the body harness are pretty much just gonna lead nowhere now, so they can be left unplugged. And we just removed the relay for the secondary air injection because it's not going to have it anymore so there's no point in having it now the very last issue that we ran into was the evap purge hose on the golf r motor this is the evap purge hose as you guys can see just a hose it goes from the breather by the side of the strut tower and goes into this check valve right here so on the golf r for some reason the hose is exactly the same, but this connector was way bigger on the Golf R. I'm not sure why. The hose diameter is the same, so I don't I don't know why they did that. So I had to remove that, put it to the side, and reuse the 1.8 EVAP hose, as you guys can see, because the Golf R one was too large for uh, this connection. It wouldn't connect. So we're using the stock Alltrack one and it works just fine the hose is the same diameter so it's not gonna hurt nothing I lied there's another problem or two that i didn't mention which i'm gonna mention right now the golf r's oxygen sensor the primary oxygen sensor bank one sensor one is a little bit different so it looks like this and it's a six pin but it has five wires meanwhile the all track oxygen sensor is also five pin sorry five wire but for some reason has five pins instead of six and a totally different connector more oval so we ended up just getting rid of the golf r oxygen sensor and putting in the all track one back in just due to the wiring differences we're gonna run it and see what happens if we do have a drivability problem then we need to put the golf r one back in and have it wired in properly and read more wiring diagrams, which is always exciting. The other strange thing about all of this is that the pre-facelift Golf R, the Mark 7.0 used the same oxygen sensor as the Alltrack right now, but Mark 7.5, which is the motor that we have, uses that different six pin oxygen sensor not sure why they did that but we're gonna find out soon enough we got the bumper core support back on all that we got the fog light delete for the um auxiliary rads as you guys can see which looks super super dope i'm digging it and these golf r fender liners came in the mail today as well so as you can see they got this grill for the airflow as well as a scoop for cooling the brakes. So, there's the radiator, and it's gonna sit like that. Obviously, it's not bolted up, but it's gonna be nice. Then, the very last thing we have to figure out, which is, you know, gonna come soon, but it's not a huge priority, is installing the Golf R washer bottle on the all track. So if you guys haven't watched my other videos, the Alltrack washer bottle used to sit right here on the driver's side, but since now we have the auxiliary radiator in its spot, we have no choice but to use the Golf R washer bottle, which sits on the passenger side, right on the frame rail. And it's a two piece washer bottle. And we do have to extend some washer lines. So here's the pump, the uh, washer fluid pump and we can use the golf r one which is not a problem we can delete this one but these lines right here they have to be extended to the passenger side and thankfully we do have those we do have those right here that we'll need to scavenge we also have the mark seven and a half golf r digital cockpit which we're going to retrofit but that'll be for another video i am waiting on the rest of these Polar Knight black trim pieces to match because the Alltrack 
is gray. Also, of course, every single coolant line that you see in the all track right now, including the radiator hoses and adapters, are all from the Golf R. So the old ones are just in a mess, just in a pile on the floor. As you guys can see, car is pretty much ready to roll. In the next episode, we will be coating this car and getting her on the road. So stay tuned for that. Don't miss a thing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.